I think you're lifting way too heavy. from Geek Tank and I'm here with Roger Cross. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I wanted to start out with your love of aviation. Mm -hmm. So what drew you to aviation and, and what's your favorite thing to fly? Oh my, I'm, I was 10 years old when I first got on an airplane from Jamaica mm -hmm. when our family was moving to Vancouver, BC, Canada. And um, back when they used to let kids go into the cockpit, um, they, you know, we could go up and I was just looking at wow, all these buttons and all these things up there, and they gave me my little wing and things like that, and I was so fascinated with it. And I thought, mm, this is something I, I, you know, I'd like to look into in the future. And then later on, I, you know, I was a Boy Scout. Yeah, I really was a good boy at one point. No, I, <laughs> I mean, I'm still. A very yeah, and uh, <laughs> tried glider and different things, and then just um, when I was graduating, I looked into it more and just decided not. This is what I love doing. It took some, t um, f you know, personal flight, um, some small flight lessons, and it's like I want to do this, and so pursued it, and just you know, glad I did it. Is it more like tiny planes? Do you like really big planes? Well, I mean, I, at one point, I had my class one multi IFR rating. You know, it allowed me to fly some pretty big planes. Mm -hmm. I didn't fly anything too big. I mean, a 402 or something like that was probably as big as I got. Um, but I mean, I mean, back in the day, I loved um, like the you know G, G5s and G6s are like, woo, big deal for me, right? And so it's just, yeah, it was, I, I loved it. Yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. It's like you found something you were passionate and then you found another thing yeah. with, with acting and being in shows. Yeah, well, acting was something I did before and I loved it, but it didn't consider it a viable career. Okay. So it's one of the reasons why, you know, being logical and things with the family, they're like, are you doing something concrete? Yes, study aviation and love, you know. Okay, so you always had a backup plan, just in yeah. case. Well, it wasn't even a backup. It wasn't even a oh, thought. Oh, it was the original it was, plan. It was, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> what role would you love to play, like in any genre? If you could just drop everything and play that one role, what's your dream role? Y you know, I, I'm a huge Muhammad Ali fan. Okay. And Will Smith did it, but there's another version that could be done about like why he became a boxer and things like that. I'd love to play that character. Mm -hmm. um, I'd also love to play the John Stewart version of um, of Green Lantern. That would be amazing. He, had, I mean, that's a great story. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know, you should check it out. It's a great story. And yeah, tell people to you know push for it. Get it out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get it out there. <laughs> and with me doing it, that is okay. <laughs> And moving on, like with all the characters that you've played, yes. which one's your favorite? Oh my God, I, that's too. That's so hard. That too hard? That's yeah. so hard. But I mean, I you know I back in the first wave days, you know that was one of my first real like full time gig. Um, I, I loved my Joshua Kane character. Uh, I played Thurgood Marshall in a movie I did years that meant a lot. Um, and you know more recently. Uh, Travis Verta on Continuum. I, I, I love that character and I love working on that show. It was amazing. And Six as a special place as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's at it, different point, um, points in your life, you do different things. And I, I, for me, it was more about the growth and the journey. Okay. And each time you did something and you found something that, like, 
Ooh, and it just it becomes more natural and you start feeling it. And the first movie I did over in China and where, where I decided to pursue acting full time for uh, was, you know, it, it's my death scene in the movie that really connected with me and just kind of like, you know, this felt really powerful. And I'm like, no, this is something I have to try. So mm -hmm. that, was, that was it. With each character, do you have like a thing associated with them? Like some people do like shoes or like it's a hairstyle or it's a certain look. Is there like a piece of each character you kind of take with you and they become like a little part of you kind of sort of? Or do you kind I mean, of leave that on the set? You try to. I, I, I try to leave that on the set. I mm -hmm. mean, it, it is a craft and um, I, I don't want to, you can't help but if you were playing a depressed character and a depressing character, you can't help but take some of it home with you sometimes. You try not to because you know you have loved ones at home that you want to be with, and you don't want to bring this crazy person home. And yes, there are people who are, you know, very method. And Daniel Day Lewis, he's brilliant, absolutely amazing, and he lives the character twenty four. It's just too hard for me and yeah. too tiring. And uh, you know, it probably wouldn't have many people around if I brought some of these crazy characters home. And right, be like, but yeah, no, he, there's uh, there's always something that I try and find that's unique about it and yes I you it's in us and it's in me obviously because I've portrayed it <laughs> but um yeah you take it with you but I'd leave it there okay I leave it there for your own protection for my own yes for my own and well being and my loved ones as well so <laughs> they can be around me and standing around me you mentioned six how did you feel when dark matter matter ended like so abruptly you know, it, it, it was it it was it was a strange way that it ended, and um, and Joe had a great plan going forward, and, and for season, you know season four and five, as he always said he always had that five year plan for the show, and we thought it was going to happen because he had great following, things were happening, but then some executives <laughs> on on our side as well as on Sci Fi, you know, they didn't work things out properly and the show ended so it, it, it's it's a terrible way for it to end because there was more to be told and should have been given that opportunity mm -hmm. um but um eh, such is life right right such is life you move on is there like a difference you see working with different studios like cw and sci-fi since you worked on a couple different shows yeah. here and there is there a difference between like the networks or some more communicative or some like easier to deal with oh, or? almost definitely but but i think it, it's honestly it's not so much the network as the producers. Gotcha. They're, you know, different people are in charge of different shows. Mm -hmm. And yes, there's there are certain rule at top that, you know, certain networks have and some of them are easier to work with than others. But generally speaking, it's the producers and the executive, network executive individually who are in charge of each show gotcha. that can set the tone and or ruin the tone <laughs> in some cases. And so, yeah, it, it's not, as I said, not so much that it's the individual People. It depends what you get. It's kind of like a lot of things. If you get the wrong person when you show up for your, you know, DMV driver's test or something like that, mm -hmm. you're gonna, you're not gonna have a very good experience. Gotcha. And you get someone else who's great, and you're like, oh, okay, that was simple, right? Right. So. Our podcast is all about acceptance in the geek community, and we consider everyone a geek, whether you're like a hockey fan or a Star yeah. Trek fan. So, besides aviation, what do you geek out about? Oh man, what a geek! I. I I'm a, I'm a sports geek, I, yeah. um, especially football and basketball. <laughs> football and basketball, I love it. And um, I, I love great shows, and I, I have a great time. You know, me, me and my boys, we I, I have two kids, and we watch shows together and stuff like that. But, and yes, I, I, I let my older, my 12 year old watch Dark, um, Defenders, but yeah. <laughs> He's mature. And <laughs> With everything coming out, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. you have to see it, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Superheroes. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're so excited for Infinity Wars coming oh, yeah. out yeah, next Friday. It's just going to be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. yeah. Well, thank you so much. This oh. is awesome. Oh, my pleasure. Take care. <laughs>
Interview over. <laughs> <laughs> Mic drops. Mic drops. Okay, there you go.